Hey there, welcome back to The Clown Show. Glad you could join me today. So, the whole purpose of this video is to talk a little bit about custom liveries and use some of the cool tools that are out there to facilitate that. This came up as a specific topic of conversation in a recent Wild West Zones PCA sim racing meeting where we were talking about how we're delivering custom paints for Series 1. And someone on the committee actually asked the $64 million question, what's trading paints? Suddenly dawned on us that with the National Series, uh, Series 5 just wrapping up, people that had been participating in that hadn't been using trading paints and may have never even heard of it. Um, because of the way that we were delivering the paint files. Uh, you probably remember if you were participating that every week you had to download a zip file that contained a bunch of files that you put in the paints directory for the specific car we were driving in that series. And that basically allowed you to see other people's paints and for them to see your paint as we were racing. And that actually is what showed up in the broadcast, which was pretty neat. With trading paints, you're doing something a little bit differently. You're actually allowing a centralized server, a third party, to manage those paint files. So what I'm gonna to explain today is, A, how to create a trading paints account and get that set up for completely free. And second, how do you create a custom livery that uh, you can enjoy in iRacing and really make the experience your own? I'm gonna put some links in the description of the video that will allow you to find these resources later. Um, and you can re refer to them um, at your leisure. But hopefully this will give you what you need to know to get started so that uh, when uh, Series 1 of the Wild West Zones PCA Sim Racing begins, you are well equipped with the car looking the way you want it to look. So let's get started. So first things first, as I mentioned, uh, Trading Paints is a third-party service, and it is partially web-based, and there's also an app that you install uh, that's a helper you install on your machine that basically grabs the paint files for your car and all the cars you're racing against and loads them into the appropriate iRacing folder. First, we're gonna talk about where to go for Trading Paints. Trading Paints is an online service, so we're just gonna put in tradingpaints.com. And when we open up Trading Paints, we actually get the nice little uh, banner here, the custom car painting platform for iRacing. Now, the cool thing here is that iRacing also acknowledges Trading Paints as kind of a de facto standard for doing custom liveries. Uh, it was built specifically to do this, and just about everybody that's been in iRacing for any great length of time has leveraged it at one time or another. That may be a gross overgeneralization, <laughs> but it is a relative truth, I, I believe. So um, when you go onto the site here, um, there are a couple of things to know. One is there are two types of accounts that you can create at Trading Paints. Um, if you just create an account, you're creating the free account and you're good to go. Um, there is an upsell option. There are additional features that you may want to look at. Um, I uh, personally, when I signed up, I thought that was kind of interesting. I'll be really honest with you. Shh, don't tell anybody this. But most of the pro features, I haven't really utilized that much. So a free account should be perfectly serviceable for just about everybody um, in terms of seeing the showroom, seeing custom liveries other people are doing, and then applying your own custom liveries. So it also begins with creating an account, which you click on the little link here. Um, the important thing to know here is that you need to have your iRacing customer ID number, um, just like... Um, with other things associated with iRacing, even PCA Sim Racing, um, you have to provide your customer ID number just to associate everything that you're doing um, to that number um, and basically apply the paints appropriately and all that sort of stuff. We'll talk about it in a little bit. Um, there's a cool little tool tip here that reminds you um, that uh, you can actually go into the iRacing member site, click on My Account, and the iRacing ID number is that five or six digit number in the upper right hand corner. Um, oddly enough, this is one of the few things you can't do in the new UI. I looked and looked and looked and could not find the iRacing ID number anywhere in the new UI. So don't look there. It is something you do have to go through the website, the traditional website, and grab that information. Once you have that, you are set up. 
you put that number in, you enter an email address, create a password, be sure to create a secure password, one that's not used anywhere else, including on iRacing. And by the way, kudos to Trading Paints for putting that language in here because it's incredibly important. Password reuse is a horrible, horrible thing. And if you want to hear more about that, you can uh, follow up with me directly or visit spycloud.com. Anyway, create your account. Um, I'm not going to create an account simply because I already have an account associated with my iRacing customer ID number. So we're going to jump from here, fast forward, and pretend that we just created the account. But before I do that, um, you may be asked when you create the account to verify the account. It will send a notification to your iRace, iRacing messaging system. Be sure to go in there and um, do the click through to acknowledge the creation of the account to sort of follow through in the process. It'll walk you through that, but don't forget to do that part or else your account won't, won't be fully associated yet. So definitely read the instructions carefully and follow them to completeness to get your account set up. So once you've created an account, you're going to have a lovely little dashboard like this that uh, defaults to taking you to your paints. So before I forget, I want to actually tell you one thing here that you need to know. Um, Trading Paints is actually a two-part application, right? So one is the software that we're accessing via the web to push our paints up and manage our paint schemes. The other is the helper application. The helper application needs to be installed to basically manage downloading and putting the paint files in the appropriate directory in your iRacing um, folders. So the way you get the helper file isn't immediately obvious. Um, at least it isn't after you've got an account. I, I can't recall when I created my account if it walked you through downloading the helper app or not. But if it did not, where you can find this is that along the banner here, there's a little icon, looks like a little racer where it's supposed to represent you, I think. Uh, you click on that and there's an install downloader. And if we click on install downloader, brought to this lovely page here where we can install trading paints. If we click on that button, it's gonna download this MSI folder. Um, and like any other uh, installable application, it's going to um, uh, ask you some permissions to install the application and go through the dialogue to do that. Once it's complete and it's uh, com completed uh, doing its, uh, its install, it will present a dialogue that is accessible through your uh, footer menu over here where the application is running. You can right click on it, select preferences and bring it up anytime. Um, when you have the preferences open, you'll note that um, there are some general things um, that you have available to you. One is to start trading paints at startup. Um, this is useful so you don't have to remember to start trading paints before you start your iRacing session. It'll automatically load and be ready for you and waiting to do what it needs to do to update the paints of not only your cars, but the cars of the competitors that you're driving against. And you can also uh, select whether or not you want it to automatically refresh paints. Um, there are certain circumstances where you may not. Um, in fact, uh, with the PCA Sim Racing National Series um, previously run, because we were using ePodium Sports or eSports to, um, no, Podium eSports to um, broadcast the, the races live, um, we wanted to have the files loaded statically on everybody's machine to prevent any sort of glitches retrieving those from a third party source. Makes perfect sense if you have a lot of cars on track and you're trying to keep a really clean presentation and display things in a professional manner as Podium always has for us, then we wanna make sure that those files are, are handled differently. Trading Paints is a nice alternative because it means that people can manage their own paint files and you don't have to worry about getting that consolidated zip file once a week and remembering to put it in your paints file um, so that you can see all the exciting liveries that people are driving. So that is, is useful. There are some advanced options in this tool as well. You don't need to worry about these so much, but um, uh, there, there are some cool stuff here, like the painting mode is something that um, I haven't really used a whole lot, but I know it's pretty neat. It allows you to have 
dry racing session up and running and trading paints will continually monitor for changes to the paint file in the paint directory and update the car in the session. Um, this is not something you want. You don't want to race in painting mode. I, I believe that that would cause all sorts of performance issues. But in a practice session like what we were showing today, um, if you were in painting mode, you could basically modify your file and check it out and see what it looked like before you actually uploaded it to the main server. Um, and it would be, be useful that way. Um, there are some other cleanup things and stuff, except the defaults, um, unless you have reason to monkey with this. Um, but it's nice to know that you do have some additional options. One of the things that I have done in here, uh, on the left-hand side, you can actually see the list of cars. You can filter um, by putting in part of the name of the car. Um, so if we put in here rough, we're going to get the rough car selections, um, and we're all good to go here. I've already um, selected my um, uh, track car here. The reason why this is kind of cool is that you can pull up the ones that um, uh, you're looking for, but once you've actually found a car that you want to work on and it's a car that you regularly race and you may want to come in here and modify the livery on a regular basis, you can select the car and you'll notice that these all have pins in them. That pin is right up here in the upper left-hand corner where this, uh, this applies. So this is actually kind of cool. Um, what we're going to do is we're actually going to wind up with this, I'm going to show you how to get to this. This is a, a custom design with the sport class markers and WWZ um, tail markers for um, for the, the the roof, which is absolutely awesome. Um, but this didn't happen by magic. What I wound up doing to to select this and get this was I went to the showroom. And the showroom is a place where people that are artists and are generating liveries and are making them available for free showcase their designs and make them available for us. So we can go in here and let's just say uh, we want to look at trending. Um, so I'm in the trending section. Now I'm, I can see that here. Um, if I actually want to look for a specific car like the roof, for instance, road racing cars, I can scroll down here and find the roof RT12R track. And I can click on that and I can see all the cool liveries that folks have developed for this car. Now, the one that I that caught my eye immediately was this carbon roof, which I thought was kind of cool. It's got um, some nice colors to it. Um, I, I like black and yellow together. I like the carbon fiber look. And this is this is speaking to me. So I'm going to race this paint. When I click on that, it asks me if I want to confirm. And I do. So I'm going to confirm that. And now, if I go back to my paints, I will see that my Roof RT12R track car has this paint applied. Okay, so this looks cool. This is neat. So if I actually want to see this in Sim, I can do that. I can actually come into um, the uh, iRacing UI and I can find uh, the Roof GT3 Challenge. We'll just jump in there. We'll do a solo race and we'll do a test drive. And once this loads, um, I'll be able to see my newly applied trading paints delivery on my car. Pretty neat, like that, that's pretty sweet. So that's a base solution um, and I can, can actually apply that. So here we are in iRacing and we can see our livery has been applied. Um, if we want to take a kind of a, a broader look around the car, we can do some pretty cool stuff. If you've not found this before, a little uh, tip. Control F12 brings up your camera edit positioning, and you can actually do all sorts of cool things. Like you can control the X, the Y, and the Z axis. So if we can move the Y axis around, we can actually rotate this camera view all the way around here to where we can see kind of the front of the car. Um, we can zoom this in, which is kind of nice. And we can do things like move it up and down appropriately to center it on the screen, which it's kind of nice if you're trying to take a a screenshot of your livery or your car. Um, you can kind of rotate around and leverage the default camera view and move around and make that, that view kind of custom and make it look, you know, mean or aggro or however you want to actually make the car look in the photo. So here we're actually looking at this livery that we applied from Trading Paints. Um, nothing too horribly special about it at this point um, other than it's a really, really nice design. Looks sexy on the car. And we're going to keep that uh, as something that we're going to think about. But now we're actually, we, we want to get more fundamental. Um, in terms of the Wild West Zones liveries, 
Um, essentially, what we're providing is an overlay for the class distinguishing markers. And the class distinguishing markers that we settled on are, are pretty simple. There's a number placard um, that we're incorporating. Um, there is a banner on the spoiler of the roof that we're incorporating, and the end plates for the spoiler are a specific color, and also the front splitter is a specific color. So this is all to dis distinguish classes. So for the, the roof, we're talking about green um, as the primary color marker for the sport class, and we're talking about red as the primary color marker for the challenger class. So pretty cool, okay. Um, how do we apply those to a car? So let's look at that next. So if we're gonna apply custom graphics to a car design, we need to download a template to make that happen. Um, the reason why is if, obviously, if we go into my content and we pull up my cars, we have an option that's built in to iRacing to paint a car. Um, and that's using the technology that's built into iRacing. We don't require trading paints to do that. Essentially, you come and you find your car, you click on the three dots and you select paint. It opens up the paint shop. that allows you to apply a color scheme, um, custom things to your numbers, to your wheels, uh, add a custom number um, or a pattern. It's all baked into iRacing. Cool, no trading paints required. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna do some stuff that can't be done in the iRacing um, tool itself. So we're gonna download a template file. So when we click on download template, what's gonna happen is it's gonna download this zip file that contains a Photoshop document file or PSD document. And um, it comes in zip format, so we actually need to open uh, the zip file. We're going to actually extract all, and we'll just extract it to the folder that it wants to name it. And here's our file, so cool. So what we're going to do now is we're going to um, go to a site called photopea.com. Um, it's spelled photo peas in the vegetable.com. Don't call it photo pea, photopea. Uh, is the name of the tool. So we've opened this up. And if you've used a uh, image editor before, like Photoshop or the GIMP, you will note that this looks vaguely familiar. Um, it's completely free. Um, we log into the site and we have a menu up here at the top where we can actually open and we can come into this folder that we downloaded our PSD from. We can open this. And when we do that, a la presto, we have our design for the roof car, which is awesome. Okay, so a couple of things to note is that um, on the right-hand side here, um, you've got a layer editor here. Um, the first thing that's listed is a custom spec map. If you're not familiar with this or haven't read anything about that, don't worry a whole lot about it. It's essentially a way to um, control the texturing and or the shininess or metallic nature of what's seen in iRacing. So you can do some really cool design work to make you know, truly uh, a matte color, be really matte, non-reflective in, in, uh, in the simulation. You can also um, make it texturized, rough, um, or smooth, and uh, it's kind of fun. Um, I personally am not an expert at it, it requires doing some funny stuff with color mapping and all that sort of stuff. And I, I haven't played enough around with it to be really good at it yet. So I ignore it. You don't need it. It's not important. But if a car supports it, um, you will find that in the template is something you can mess around with and have fun with. Um, you will also find that there is a turn off before exporting layer here. And what that's providing is the mask that shows the car shape and um, the car mandatory features that iRacing will stamp on whether you want them to or not. So good to just be able to see that as you do your design so that you know where stuff is going. There's also something that isn't on by default um, in this that's kind of useful as well. One of the toughest things when doing uh, graphics designs for car liveries is that it's very difficult to see the true 3D contours of a vehicle in a two-dimensional format. And so what they provided is a wireframe for us so that we can actually see where those contours are. And you can kind of see where the curves of the design exist. Um, and it gives you a way to kind of figure out where that's going to appear and how it's going to appear and play with the other elements of the car. 
when you're you're doing your livery, which is, is kind of neat. It's good to know that it's there because it can be a really powerful tool for helping you do really complex designs. In our particular case here, we're not going to care so much about that. So I'm going to turn that off um, and I'm going to minimize this again because we'll, we'll come back to that in just a second. What I'm most interested in is the base. And the reason why I'm interested in the base here is that um, this is where I can change the underlying color. And I can do some other kind of interesting stuff here too. So what we're going to do first is I'm just going to change the color of this car. Um, I'm going to turn off the wing and wing braces and all of this sort of stuff and just leave this base element here. And I'm also, just for giggles, I'm going to turn off um, the, the overlay map just so I'm seeing my base color. The reason I'm going to do this is maybe I don't like blue. Maybe blue is, you know, a color that offends me in some fashion, so I want a different color. So um, the easiest way to do this is to actually select a color um, from your color picker. And you can either enter in a specific hex or RGB values, or you can select colors that are available by default here. Or you can use the color wheel to do something that's maybe not on here by default. We're just going to select this. Is, is that fuchsia? Is it pink? Is it what is that? It's 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 ugly enough for me to love it. So I'm going to choose this as my base color. So that's my foreground. So I can come up here to edit now, and I can select fill. And I'm going to use the foreground color. You can do other things as well here, but I'm going to use the foreground color since I went to the trouble of selecting it. And I can select different blend modes and all that. I'm going to keep it at normal because that's all I need. Um, I can select the opacity. There's nothing behind this layer, so I'm going to keep that opacity at 100%. Click OK, and voila. Now I have my new really, really absurdly pink background for my livery. Cool deal. So I can actually um, live with this. Of course, that's not our point here. We're actually wanting to do um, some additional work here um, to get our WWZ overlay. So how do I do that? Well, um, we actually do have a website, as you probably already know. And on this website, we have, you know, our cool new banner, which is on the tail of the cars um, uh, this season, which will be kind of fun. Our schedule, which you should pay attention to, our first race is actually coming up um, this next week. Um, the race will be on the 6th, um, the prelude on the 4th, so mark your calendars. Down here at the bottom, though, you probably noticed uh, the, the note about we're going to be using trading paints, a link to trading paints, which I've already shown you, um, and then these class zip files. So um, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to just use my own class. I'm in sport. So I'm going to pull down the roof sport zip file. So I'm going to click on that and that's going to download an, another file. And I'm going to come up here and uh, go show it in my folder. I'm going to extract it and I'm going to let it extract to the folder that it wants to extract to. And here we've got another PSD file. Cool beans. So what am I going to do with that? Well, I'm going to do exactly what I did previously, which I'm going to come back in here to Photopea and I'm going to go file and open. And I'm going to find that file that I downloaded, which is in this lovely sport directory. And there we go. So now I've got my overlay. Now you notice that I don't have a background. There's no color. There are no other design elements. There's no uh, mask or any of that other crap that, that we had to deal with in the other template. So this is just the elements that are marking or distinguishing my class. Um, from the challenge class, because if we're going to run together, we want to have distinguishing markers. So this is the end plates for the spoiler. Here's the front lip. Here are the number plates and the banners for the tail. And we have a little PCA sim racing nod on the back of the car. So cool stuff. So how do I apply that to the other template? I can simply grab this layer and drag it over top of the tab name here. And it's going to put it in here. Now I'm going to take this. I'm going to move it all the way up here to the top. So it's overlaying everything else in the car. So you see this is now nicely placed in terms of the car elements. Pretty neat stuff. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to actually export this and then import it into Trading Paints. And so how do I do that? Well, first of all, I'm going to turn off this layer that it tells me to turn off just because I like to obey rules. And... Now I've got my uh, my overlay and my base color, 
and I'm good to go. Now, I'm going to export this by going File, Export As, More, TGA. TGA stands for Targa. And I'm going to click on that. And um, the defaults are fine. I'm ex exporting in a TGA format. 2048 by 2048 is exactly what I want to do. And I'm going to save this file. Now, when it saved it, it basically saved it on the server and then immediately downloaded it for me. So it is in my download folders. Um, and I see it down here in my browser. So I can actually do my little carrot, go show in folder, and you'll see it's in the same downloads folder that I uh, was working in before. So before we leave this design, I want to show you one last thing here that's in the template that's kind of neat to know about if you're actually going to do any sort of custom livery work. There's a section called patterns. And these are all the patterns that are in iRacing. Of course, they're not in anything that's anywhere near useful in terms of colors. They're in really bright, bright colors. Um, we can do all sorts of interesting things with this um, in terms of the layer, uh, copying stuff out, doing color changes. Um, there are all sorts of things that you can do with this to make this your own if you want to use some of those patterns. It's, it's a little bit more advanced and is a little bit beyond the purpose of this video. Um, but I wanted to call it out that it is present there and it is something that you can can leverage in terms of laying out design. The patterns are all there and you can just change the colors on them and reuse them in your design if you so wish. Um, we're just going to stick with our flat car that we've exported and import that into Trading Paints. So we go back into Trading Paints and we look at our roof again. We can actually go in here, choose paint. We're going to choose a new paint and we're going to say upload this a paint and we're going to select the file. And the file we're going to select is the file that we just generated and it automatically downloaded into the download folder, that roof RT12R TGA. We're going to click OK, or open rather. Uh, and now that this is loaded, here is our lovely um, paint job. Now you notice, despite the fact that we turned off the masking, Trading Paints actually puts it back in so that we see the shape of the car and the design. Um, kind of gives us a little bit of a, of a nice piece of uh, information here in terms of what it's going to look like on the car. Now we can prove this out, of course, by going into iRacing and looking at this livery, which is what we'll do now. Okay, back in iRacing, here is our gorgeous, 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 gorgeous car. Is that fuchsia pink? What is that? Pepto-Bismol Nightmare in the green just adds to the uh, to the ugly. I like it. I really do like it. And so we've done the job. Got a custom colored car with the overlay on top of it. But a basic color may not be your thing. And despite the fact that I showed you the patterns that are built into the template, um, applying those may also not be your thing. Maybe you want to take a design that already exists in Trading Paints, and you want to just apply the color markers to that and use that. So let's take a quick look at that before we move on. So you remember in Trading Paints, we're in here, we're looking at our liveries. One of the cool things to know about uh, Trading Paints is it stores multiple liveries for your cars. So you choose one for one race, you can go back and reuse older liveries, which is kind of nice if you're racing in different series or you want different looks for different occasions. Um, maybe I don't want to race with my nightmare here. I want to go back to an old livery. I can do that. And so I can show my old liveries here and I can go back and race with the livery that uh, I had done previously, right? So this is uh, the, the one that we selected from the showroom. And this is a nice livery, so let's uh, let's use this as the template and put the overlay on top of that. How do we do that? Well, first of all, we need to set to race with this. We need to reopen iRacing again and launch this in a session so that Trading Paints will be prompted to download that livery and put it into the sim. Now, what we're going to do is we're not going to shut down the sim. We're going to leave it open and we're going to go fishing for that file so that we can use it in creating a custom livery. 
So a point of interest with trading paints and iRacing, um, you can actually see trading paints load the new livery um, when you first start a session uh, in iRacing. So in here where we've launched the application and it's running, when I click test or we go into a practice session, if we click practice, if we were in, in an actual formal practice session, you'll actually watch closely. You see how it was white and then it loaded the livery. And that is a way for you to know that your livery is being loaded properly, um, is that you should see white and then the livery get loaded and, and trading paints, is, that's basically it doing its job in the background. And once it's done it once, it's done. It won't do it again, unless you're in paint mode, which I described, uh, I believe earlier. Um, but uh, that's a, a selection in, um, in the Trading Paints helper application that you can uh, go in and actually apply paints live while you're in a session. So now that we've loaded this, let's uh, actually um, uh, leave it running because that's important because we don't want Trading Paints to clean up after itself. What we're gonna do is go into the iRacing direct. So let's actually uh, go in here. Um, if we go into documents and you find your iRacing folder and paint, and this is actually where we were dumping um, the zip file contents for PCA Sim Racing's National Series 5. If we scroll down here, we're going to find the roof track car. We open this up. Now remember we did, uh, we found our iRacing number. And one of the reasons why that is so important is that the way that iRacing distinguishes between cars is by the driver's iRacing ID. And so here's mine. So if I take this file right here and I copy it, and let's go ahead and put this copy in the download section here. So we have access to it. Um, this is the current livery that's applied to the machine because the SIM is, is running. Um, if I shut down the SIM, I'm going to clean that directory out and that livery won't be there anymore because it's cleaning up after itself. So now that I've got this file, I can actually leverage it. So now we're going to see how we're going to use that. So back here in Photopea, um, we're, we're back in uh, the editing program. What we're going to do is we're going to open that TGA file that we just downloaded or pulled out of the iRacing directory. And we'll go open. Here's the car, the car number. And so now we've got this livery in here in our editor. So we can do exactly what we did before to apply the color markers, simply by going into our open file that we still have and grabbing that layer again and just dragging it and dropping it here. So now it's on top and you see that it's applied. We can actually have it on, off, on, off, on. Okay, so you get the idea. We've applied that layer to this existing design. A couple of things to just sort of quickly note is that um, if you download a, a custom design, if you want to make edits to it, you can. But because it's downloaded in TGA format through Trading Paints, you don't have the multiple layers to work with. So um, like the decals, for instance, you can't simply remove the decal layer and have the underlying carbon fiber look here with this particular paint. So you need to be careful um, with the liveries you choose because if you need to um, replace things like decals and, and things from this flat layer, you either need to cover them with something else, replace that, that stuff, or you need to figure out how you're going to um, replace what you erase with some sort of texture. Um, if you're dealing with a flat color, that's easy. You can just use a fill or a brush and you know do your work that way. If it's a complex pattern like carbon fiber, kind of stuck. Um, that's a harder thing to do. So be sure to, to pick your, your livery of choice uh, quite wisely, or you will wind up having to get uh, overly creative in uh, removing things that you want to remove without removing the stuff you don't. Um, so a little bit of a challenge there, so just be forewarned. In this particular instance, I'm pretty happy. I like the decals that are on here. I'm, uh, I'm happy with it. So I can simply do what we did previously, which is under File, I can Export As, Go More, and can export as a TGA, which I will do. Again, it's going to ask me my questions here. All the defaults are perfectly fine. It's TGA format, 2048 by 2048. We're going to click Save. And again, it's going to download the file. You'll note here, because the 
The file that we pulled out of the iRacing folder was named for my ID. Um, downloading it from Photopea is basically marking that it's a copy of the file. It puts a parentheses one here. And uh, just make sure that you um, note what that file name is that just downloaded so that you can reference it when we go back into Trading Paints, which is what we'll do now. And Trading Paints, we can come in here, choose paint, we can choose a new paint, we can upload that paint, select the file, and we'll find that new file that we just created. It's not the one we pulled out of the iRacing folder, it's the one that we downloaded from Photopea and TGA format with our modifications. Select that, click open, and it's going to upload that. And as if by magic, we have our Trading Paints livery with our lovely WWZ PCA Sport color markers. One important thing I don't want to forget to note is that the designs in Trading Paints that are designed by the individual creators do have copyright that you need to be considerate of. So uh, just taking another person's design and uh, completely refactoring it and turning it into your own is a little unfair and not quite cool. Um, and it's actually, it's against Trading Paints policy. Now, what we've done is provided uh, a means to put an overlay over top, which I think falls into the area of fair use. So be cautious here. Don't take somebody's core design and retool it completely. Uh, make it your own and uh, call it good. Be respectful. And hey, sometimes you can just ask a creator if uh, they're okay with you reusing their design in something. And uh, very often they will say yes. But be sure to ask for permission before you just uh, take someone else's work and uh, turn it into something that, that you're going to call your own. All right. So back in the iRacing... Uh, application here is our lovely new livery all with the wwz pca sport markers and uh ready to race so this is how we do it um one of the things again to note is that i showed you um one method of actually editing the photos there are other tools that are available including gimp which is a open source utility gnu image manipulation program i believe is what that stands for um i'll provide the link in the description so you can find that as well. If you prefer to do your photo editing in a, an application on your machine and you do not want to buy Photoshop, I'll also provide links to Adobe Photoshop. Um, it is the industry standard for an Im image manipulation, has a lot of interesting tools and capabilities that most other tools are trying to copy anyway. It's not cheap, um, but they do have a seven day trial. So if you wanna give it a go and play around with Photoshop, uh, you're more than welcome to. It is a tough nut to master um, in terms of applications. It's it's uh, definitely not for the faint at heart, but um, it is very powerful. So if you're going to be doing a lot of custom image manipulation, um, it's a great tool, um, and it's one that I, I personally do use. Um, if you have any questions or comments, please do let us know. Um, you can reach out to the Wild West Zone PCA Sim Racing Coordinators via Discord. Or you can uh, reach out to me via the comments on this video. And um, if there's anything that you would like to know that I didn't cover or um, something was unclear, definitely let me know that and I'll, uh, I'll make sure to respond. Thank you very much for joining me. And I, uh, I hope that you have fun creating the custom livery of your dreams. Thanks. Bye. <laughs>